So the first thing we're going to do is to build the cross tool chain and some temporary tools. So the cross tool chain is the first part and then the uh, cross compiling temporary tools is the second part we're going to do here. So this preliminary material is interesting to read. Um, this explains how cross compilation works, how it's used in this context and how that differs slightly from a usual um, way of using cross compiling for com compiling across different architectures. So I won't go through that. It's a good read. It's quite mind bending a little bit. If you've never read it before, so for the first time you might think, I don't understand this, but if you just go through it carefully and read it, it will start to fall in place, especially once you go through the process of building. So some general instructions here on compiling. Read this carefully and act upon it because it will save you from making errors. Um, there's a lot of things to take in here, but yeah, if you do ensure that everything's been uh, met here at every requirement, then you're less likely to have problems. So let's uh, move on to the first part and start doing some compiling. So it says here, this shows how to build a cross compiler and associated tools. So although the cross compiling is faked, i.e. we're not compiling for a different architecture, but we are running through the cross compil compilation process, the principles are the same for a real cross ch tool chain. And as it says, these uh, binaries that we're going to be producing, the program is going to be put into the tools directory to keep them separate from files and the following chapters. So the first thing, the first package we start with is bid new tools. So let's go to the sources directory and you can see there's all the files and we start as always by extracting the archive. and then we change into that directory. So what I'm doing here, in case you didn't know, you could do CD space bin and press tab and it will complete as much as it can. The reason why it isn't completed anymore is because the directory bin utils 2.35 matches the start of the archive. So if I press tab again, you can see that that's the reason why it hasn't filled in anymore because it's uh, an ambiguity. It doesn't know if I want to go into that directory or if I want to complete um, the rest of this file name. I do want to go into the directory so I can just press enter now. So again it says to read the general, general compilation instructions which is more or less what I've just said but go back and read it just in case. And the first thing we've got to do is to build a temporary location to run in the commands. So all we do is we, most of these packages just need to be configured. Oh, one thing I need to just check is the uh, LFS target. Right, yes, that needs to be, sorry, that should be an echo. Yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention this. Um, if you remember the uh, GCC dump machine showed that this suffix says GNU EA, EABIHF, we've got to change uh, this triplet so that it reflects the same as well. Just having GNU is not enough, the compile will fail if we don't fix that. So let's do that now. By modifying the bash profile, sorry, not bash profile, bash RC it's in. So it's this bit here. So we'll just delete that GNU bit and add on the GNU EABIHF. So it tells the compiler that the ABI is slightly different and so is this HF that we want to use the hard float 
of the processor. So let's save that and resource. Oh. Uh, what am I doing? Let's try that again. That's it, that command there, source bash profile. Do the set command and just double check. Yep, there it is there. FS target has got the GNU EI, EABI HF on the end, so that's good. So let's go back to the bin utils, back to the build directory. Just make sure there's nothing in there that I haven't actually run anything. I haven't. So now I'm going to re highlight this command and paste it in. And that's okay. And now we're just going to run make. And like I say, if you want to time this, you can do time make. And I think it only takes uh, about two or three minutes, this first one. If you want to see if the compiler is actually using all four cores, it looks like it is because the output looks quite random. You can run top with another terminal. Uh, press Z to make it red. It's a bit easier to read sometime. And one, if you press one, it will show displays for each CPU. And you can see the um, user and system are all quite high. So that proves that all four cores are, are being utilized. Okay, so that's finished building. Um, all we need to do now is to run this last command to install the package. And that's done. So what we'll do now before we carry on is to tidy up. So we'll go back to the sources directory, type in rm-rf bin utils. And that's that package complete. So now we move on to the compiler itself, GCC. So the first thing we do is extract it.
and change into the directory. And then we can start running these commands in. So each of these lines is a single command. So as I said before, we're going to do one at a time. Although it's more clicking and pointing, it just ensures that I can be. Um, I can, it's easy to to see exactly what the output then of these commands is to make sure that there's no problems occurring. Just makes it easy to read. And then this bit here is only for 64-bit hosts, so you don't have to put it in. You can do if you want. It does check to see if the architecture is 64-bit. As you can see, it's done nothing because there's no output from the... Um, in fact, this looks like it doesn't put anything out, but um, it, it won't harm harm the build if you do run that command on 32-bit. So now we've got this huge config command. Copy this in, but don't press enter straight away because there's a couple of extra switches we need to send to GCC. Um, the reason is the last part of the build, it doesn't use the C flags and the the options we're set in the C flags and that affects how the compiler that we're going to build here is built and it builds it incorrectly. So what we need to do, we need to pass in a couple of switches to reiterate again what architecture we're using. So we use with arch equals arm v8 dash a plus crc plus simd. So exactly the same options as we used before with tune uh, core text a simple two with fpu and that's neon dash fp dash arm v8 and last one this is extremely important if you don't put this one in it does try to compile with a soft floating point unit so with float is hard equals hard so once you've added those extra options in those extra switches you can press enter and let the configure run and we have to add in those switches every time we build GCC to ensure that it's final run it uses those options that we've set because it just to explain that the C flags and CXX flags are for make. So although we are running make for GCC, it's up to GCC whether it listens to make, what make tells it, and it obviously doesn't in the last bit for some reason. Uh, it might, might be a safety thing uh, to ensure that GCC isn't affected by maybe some parameters that are not safe to use in, in the C flags. So let's just run make. I think this takes about half an hour to run. So I'll just wait for that to finish and I'll come back.
Okay, so that seems to have built okay. No errors at the end there, so that's good. Um, all we need to do now is to install it. And finally, there's um, a little modification here that needs to be made. And that looks like that's done. So just go back to the sources and delete the source package. Sorry, not the source package, but the source directory. And then we can move on to the next section. Now, because the um, Raspberry Pi is a kind of specialized um, unit, that it doesn't boot in the normal way it's got um its own sort of custom hardware as opposed to a pc which is pretty standard um it's probably easier to to not use the linux kernel package that comes from the uh kernel people but to use the one that the raspberry pi team actually uh, make available um so what we need to do is to fetch that um, if we type in something like BCM2711 which is the number of the um, chip and kernel let's see if we can find the link yeah kernel building this is the link you want it tells us how to build a kernel from scratch for the Raspberry Pi but using their own version it's got extra bits and bobs in it um, which uh, ensures that the um, kernel will work and uh, at least the extras that are in the Raspberry Pi should work although some do need firmware to be installed but at least the code will be there waiting once the firmware is installed um, the best way to get this is to send a click on that. So go to the GitHub repository. Um, now this is all the latest stuff. We don't want that. You want what you want is a um, um, a release. So I can remember how to drive this now. Um, different actually oh yes this is it. it's because the window is so narrow so hidden here is branches and tags so if I just reduce the zoom down a little bit oh we are at 100% again funnily enough okay uh, let me put that back up then I don't know why that oh it's because I'm in a different tab isn't it let me just make that a bit bigger and then maximize this when the browser is wide enough you get these two extra options here and what we need to go is to the tags and just download one that they've tagged because that really remain means that it's a release so if you go into the releases here you can see they've released uh, one of the kernels eight days ago so that should be fairly stable so if you just click on that link there it gives you some information and you've got a couple of links down here with which we can download using wget as we did before so if I right click this copy link address just do wget here and paste that link in and just wait for that to download so in theory you could get rid of the Linux um, tarball that we downloaded as part of the LFS download 
um, because we won't be using it at all. Um, likewise for grub for the boot, you could delete that as well if you're tight for space. We won't be using that at all either. But what we will be doing is the same um, methods for um, installing the kernel and manipulating the kernel code as we would do if it was the real original vanilla code from the kernel.org site. Right, it's coming down at a fair old pace, which is good. We'll just wait for it to finish. And then we can carry on with this bit here. Okay, so that's done. So let's extract that. You can see it's called Raspberry Pi kernel. So like I say, normally on a normal build, we'd be doing tar minus XVF Linux dash 5.8.3.tar.xz. Um, but we're not using that file. So this is the one from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. You can see this is quite recent actually. It's from the 1st of February 2021. So it's only like four days ago. So next. So that's the directory we're in, and we need to just run these commands they've got here. And I'll just run each one of these commands in one at a time. And that's it. So we can type that one up. And move on to the glibc package. Now this has stopped as if there's a directory, but if we press tab, cut the times again, you'll see the reason why it stopped is because there's a patch file. So it's worth, if it does stop, uh, just to double tab it, just to ensure that you haven't got an old copy of the um, tarball extracted into the source directory that you've forgotten to delete. Because if you extract it over that and then just carried on building you might be building using old information from a previous build which might affect the new build so just be sure that the old directory has in fact been removed before we carry on okay so let's go into the directory and the first bit here will have no effect because you can see what it's doing is looking at the machine name to finding out to find out if it's a 32-bit or a 64-bit machine and it looks like what it's doing is it's linking this ldlinux.so.2 to a file called ldslsb.so.3 so if we look at this file it probably won't exist and it says here create a symbolic link for LSB compliance. So let's do a listing on this file. And you can see it's not there. So what we need to do, we need to actually manually modify this uh, and run this command in to uh, stay within this LSB compliance. Now if we look at 
LD um, LFS lib LD Linux files. In fact, there's none there at all. That's interesting. Right, okay. Um, yes, of course, we haven't installed anything. That's why it's creating the link prior to the build. Um, what we need to do is modify this. The one that gets created for the um, ARM architecture is called ldlinux.so.3. So I'll just know that from what I've um, been doing before. So we need to modify this. Change that two to three. Press enter. Oh, what's happened there? Oh, I left the remains of the last command there. Um, right, ln minus svf. Right, that's what it should look like. So I've changed instead of ld linux so dot two. I've changed it to three. So that's created the link, but there's no source file there at the moment. So it look a bit strange. Um, but it will it will just work. So some glibc programs use non FHS compliant VARDB. So it's another little patch just to make the uh, installation standard or compliant with the file hierarchy standard. And now we can proceed with running the build-in. Again, for each of these commands, there's explanations as to what the switches do. So now let's run the make command and build the C library.
Okay, so that build is finished. Um, there's one thing I like this building, I was just looking through my notes, I'm not sure if I've done the uh, this link correctly at the top here, so um, I think this should be named slightly differently, but what I'm going to do is install it, because it's only a standard, it's not required for the build, and then just check to see what's installed. So I'm going to run this. Now this is one point where it says the LFS variable must be set correctly, otherwise this will trash your system. So I'm just going to echo it just to make sure it is set and it is, so that's good. Um, now I can run that in. And once that's done, I'll just double check this this link here. Um, on, on my notes, I've got a rough note saying it should be LD Linux dash arm HF. Um, but like I said, I'll just see what gets installed. Right, so that's built. So let's have a look at fs slash lib. So it's LD. Yeah, there it is there. Yeah, there's not an LD Linux dot so dot three. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the file that should be pointing at that LDS LSB SO three. So what I need to do is to get this command back. jump down and you paste it right okay and I need to change this file for that file there right so Check that now. LD Linux. Yeah, that looks better. And then that's finally pointing at this file here, which is the actual library. Um, yeah. Okay. So now we need to make some checks. I'll run some checks to make sure that this compiler, uh, uh, sorry, not the compiler, well, the compiler and the C library uh, are doing their job correctly, the new ones that we've just built. So that's a small C program that's just been created there. This compiles it, and this outputs some stuff about it. 
Yeah, that's better. You can see it's using that LD Linux RMHF.so.3 that we created that link um, pointing at that's pointing at that one. So ignore what's in the book because obviously that's for an x86 architecture. This is what you should expect to see lib LD Linux ARMHF.so.3. And it says we can remove those output files and it says run this utility to finalize the installation of limits.h header and that's it so back to the source and delete the directory and we can move on to our lib standard C++ So this needs to have GCC extracted again. Okay, we change into that directory. And paste these values here. Now, I um, wasn't sure if I needed to put in the same switches as I did before, but because this is the GCC package, I am going to do it again, put the same ones in, um, just to be sure. Um, that they are being picked up because it is important especially that float one so I'll just put them in I couldn't ascertain which, whether it is actually necessary or not so with arch equals arm v8 dash a plus crc plus sim d with tune equals core text dash a72 with fpu equals neon dash fp dash arm v8 and with float equals hard Let's double check that And press enter and start the compile or start the configure, big pardon. Okay, so we'll just build that now.
had it's built and we finally run the command to install it. And that's done. So we go back to the sources and delete the source directory GCC. So that is the section completed compiling across tool chain and the next bit we'll move on to is cross compiling some temporary tools.